Most people today are aware of what a netbook is. It is a small laptop computer, usually quite inexpensive for people who just need a computer for basic tasks. My Lenovo ThinkPad X130e is one of the larger and more expensive netbooks of its time. But uh, the netbook, as you may know, is quite a recent uh, invention. Netbooks have only been around for three or four years. Well, before the netbook came along, if you needed a small computer for basic tasks, you bought a device called a handheld PC. Well, today, for your viewing pleasure, I have such a device. And here it is. This is an NEC Mobile Pro 900C. This is a so-called handheld PC, and it was made in 2004. This is a very small laptop style computer that meets all the hardware requirements to be called an official handheld PC. Like the Ultrabook of today, the term handheld PC was a trademark. I'm not sure who it was held by. It might have been by a group of companies, but it was a trademark that could only be applied to computers that met all the specific hardware and software requirements to earn the title. Well, this unit, the NEC Mobile Pro 900C, was the last, the most powerful, and one of the largest handheld PCs. But you can see it is small enough for me to comfortably pick it up with one hand, and I do have small hands. I've been wanting a handheld PC for at least a couple of years. Um, I first heard of them a couple of years ago, and for about as long, I've been reading a wonderful website, definitely the best website on the planet for people who want to read about handheld PCs and, a co and their uh, older cousins called Palm Top PCs. It's the best website in the place to go. It's called hpcfactor.com. And I've always wanted one of these, but I've never been able to have one because the price that perfect working units go for uh, was always prohibitive. Perfect working units like this one usually go for around a hundred dollars. Well I got this one including shipping for a total of about forty dollars. Um, unfortunately uh, what the seller didn't mention and what their very crappy photos uh, failed to show was that cosmetically uh, you can see this unit is very strange looking. Uh, someone has painted it in a very crappy silver gray paint. It's supposed to say the name of the product right here. And although it doesn't look like the blue parts here were painted, they are still covered in a very weird substance. But uh, the inside of the unit is immaculate, which I'll show you in a couple of moments. And the underside is fine. And this works absolutely perfect. So. The seller might have not been entirely truthful about this thing, but uh, for the price I got it for, I'm happy anyway. So, first we'll go over the outside of the unit. We have the latch to open the display. We have a compact flash card slot. We have a headphone jack. We have a built-in microphone, battery status, and alarm LEDs. We go over to the right side. We have a PCM CIA card slot, a USB port, a mini USB port to hook it to a desktop computer. We have an infrared port. And on the left side, we have a modem. We have the power jack. We have a proprietary external display port. And we have a proprietary serial port. And now, I'll open the device up. There's what it looks like. We have a keyboard here. It's a 92% size keyboard, so it is actually quite comfortable to type on. There it says handheld PC. And you can see here, what is this? Well, if we pull it out, it's a stylus. Why? Because this thing has a touch screen. That was one of the hardware requirements for a handheld PC, is that they have a touch screen. And they use that as uh, a mode of user input instead of a built-in trackpad or other pointing device. This was the pointing device. Although if you want to, 
you can use a USB mouse on this thing. Now, handheld PCs in terms of hardware and software are not like desktop computers at all. I'll give you the hardware specifications of this thing to start with. This device has an Intel Xscale PXA255 processor. This is an ARM compatible processor that runs at 400 megahertz. It has 64 megabytes of RAM and it has 32 megabytes of internal flash storage. There is no hard drives and the only mode of using either internal or external uh, storage on these things is via the compact flash slot, the PCMCIA slot, and the USB port. The operating system on this thing is not like what you'd find on a desktop PC and it does not operate like one you'd find on a desktop PC either. This thing runs an operating system called Windows CE and you might have heard of it before. Windows CE is a sort of mini version of Windows that runs its own subset of software and is compatible with its own subset of certain hardware. The first version of Windows CE came out in 1994 and it's still being developed today, I do believe. It's not called Windows CE anymore. A couple of years ago the name was changed to Windows Embedded Compact, which is kind of strange because now it's Windows EC, but anyhow. Windows CE was written for a bunch of architectures. It runs on ARM, it runs on MIPS, uh, it runs on SH3, it does run on the x86 platform, and I do believe a couple of others. So, this thing runs Windows CE.net version 4.2. Uh, the .net was just kind of a uh, special name Microsoft gave because it was uh, with Windows CE version 4 that Microsoft had started implementing a mobile version of the .NET framework. Blah, blah, blah. There's nothing really special about it. It's Windows CE 4.2. Um, the current version of Windows CE is, I believe, 7. I believe 7, but uh, you can actually still buy very cheap netbooks from China that are actually running uh, Windows CE 5 or 6. So, this runs Windows CE 4.2. Um, what's very interesting, and I think ingenious, is how the operating system actually works. The operating system in this thing is stored in ROM. I believe something like 16 megabytes of ROM. And when you boot up the device for the very first time ever, the operating system loads itself out of ROM and into RAM. I'm talking the entire operating system copies itself from ROM into RAM. It's only like, it's less than 16 megabytes, the entire operating system, and it loads itself completely into RAM, and from that point on, it never accesses ROM again. From that point on, the device completely and always resides in random access memory. And the only time it'll ever have to touch uh, its permanent copy in ROM ever again is if you need to do a hard reset of the device, there, thereby clearing RAM, and it has to copy itself into RAM again. And of course, if that happens, everything that has been changed in the operating system, any programs you've installed, or anything, are gone, because usually, um, it's actually not very good practice, but by default, you install programs into RAM, just like the operating systems in RAM. So if you do a hard reset, it's just like starting all over again from scratch. Now, because the operating system, uh, in theory, always and only always is used in RAM, and everything's stored in RAM, you can actually choose in the operating system how much RAM you want to dedicate to storage, storage of the operating system and any programs and files you put there, and how much RAM you want to dedicate to acting as actual RAM in which to run programs. Uh, it's, it's very interesting, and I'll demonstrate it later. So yes, this thing has 64 megabytes of RAM, and the entire operating system lives in it. So, uh, what I want to do before I boot this thing up, I just want to show you the underside. And... Oops. Oh, uh... Yeah, that should be locked. As you can see, there's a backup battery door here. Um, inside here lives a CR2032 battery, and that keeps the RAM alive when the device is turned off, which obviously you need, so 
the, because the operating system and all your programs live in RAM. Um, if the backup battery were to ever die or something like that and the device were to completely lose electricity, then better hope you have a backup save because you're losing everything. So we'll look at the stickers here. There's a speaker. There's a reset button. That's to do a soft reset, which isn't like a hard reset. With a soft reset, the RAM is still intact, so you don't lose anything. You have to do a soft reset once in a while in case the device freezes up. So, what I've done is I took the main battery out. This is the main battery, which has also been nicely painted. I took the main battery out and the backup battery out, so the device is completely clean now. When I turn it on, it's going to be just like turning it on for the first time. I do have a backup saved on the Desk Pro that I'll load back onto this thing so you can see the programs and other stuff I've done with this. But for now, let's turn it on for uh, theoretically the very first time. So now, there's the startup screen. The device is currently loading the operating system from ROM into RAM. and it's going to go through the whole startup sequence. And there we go, you might have heard a little thing there, and it's asking us to calibrate the screen. So let me take out the stylus here, and we'll calibrate the screen. Uh, better to do with when you have both hands, so one can hold on the device. And, alright, we'll press enter. And it says, before using your mobile pro machine for the first time, it is strongly, yeah, it, it wants to format the, uh, the internal uh, 32 megabyte flash memory. But uh, I don't want to do that because I have something stored there. Uh, proceed with setup, no. And there we go. So we're here. Now, uh, before I uh, get into other stuff, I just want to mention, um, handheld PCs, the first handheld PCs were introduced in 1996, and of course this machine was the very last of them, manufactured from 2003 to 2005, and this one was made in 2004. If you haven't figured it out by now, handheld PCs are related to the much more popular and much more successful pocket PCs. Handheld PCs are in the form factor of a laptop and they have a physical keyboard. Pocket PCs are in the form of a PDA and they usually don't have a physical keyboard. Pocket PCs are devices such as the Compaq iPack and the Dell Axum and they run the same software. They also run Windows CE just like handheld PCs and in the end they proved more popular and Pocket PCs continue to be developed in terms of hardware and software improvements and handheld PCs just kind of died out. Which is unfortunate because I think in terms of uh, actual utility use, handheld PCs are much more useful. They have a physical keyboard, very much better for typing stuff. With a pocket PC you'd have to buy an outboard keyboard that you'd hook up to it. Handheld PCs and pocket PCs, while they run the same underlying operating system, Windows CE, they run different flavors of Windows CE. Um, all the early handheld PCs, not this one, but uh, pretty much every handheld PC that preceded this one, uh, ran a special uh, flavor of Windows CE called Handheld PC, the last version being Handheld PC 2000. Um, Pocket PCs, they ran their own flavor of Windows CE called Pocket PC, and the last version of that was, I believe, Pocket PC 2002. Um, the Pocket PC flavor of Windows CE was succeeded by Windows Mobile, and of course Windows Mobile was succeeded by Windows Phone. So obviously Pocket PCs had a much larger impact in the world of Windows CE than handheld PCs did. I guess it went to sleep. Yep. 
Without a doubt, the most popular handheld PCs ever made were the ones made by Hewlett Packard called the Jornada. And if you search handheld PC, uh, you're going to find either HP Jornadas or NEC Mobile Pros. The NEC Mobile Pro line was the second most popular handheld PCs. And they were also the largest. I believe all of the NEC Mobile Pro handheld PCs were large, like this one, uh, making it possible to have a nearly full-size keyboard that was very easy to type on. The HP Jornadas, they are much smaller, and as such, they have a smaller keyboard, something like three-quarters of full size, and so they're not really that good for touch typing on. But uh, their small size does make them quite attractive. The Mobile Pro is also much more powerful than the Jornadas. Um, this is the quintessential Mobile Pro. When you search NEC Mobile Pro, the 900C is going to be the uh, unit you hear of most, and it of course has a 400 megahertz Intel X scale processor. The quintessential Jornada, the Jornada 720, it has a 200 megahertz. I want to say a 200 megahertz MIPS processor. No, it has the Jornada 720 has a 206 megahertz uh, Intel SA1110 or something like that, and it runs at 200 megahertz. Um, the Jornada also lacks a USB port and a couple other features that this thing has. But uh, the Jornada 720s have voted out the most popular handheld PCs. The Mobile Pro 900 and its uh, brother, this unit, the 900C, um, they are the second most popular. The 900 and the 900C are exactly the same unit. This is the 900C. Uh, the only difference is the software and ROM. The 900 runs handheld PC 2000, which is based on Windows CE 3.0, and this unit, the 900C, has Windows CE 4.2. They both have their merits, but as a rule, uh, this unit, which has the newer version of CE, is compatible with more software and more hardware devices. So, I'm going to quit my blabbing. Let's uh, take a look at this thing. Now, uh, as you've probably already seen, uh, one of the merits of Windows CE is that it's able to start up instantly. You close it, and it goes to sleep, and when you open it, there's no delay for startup time. It turns on automatically. And such is the same when I hit the power button. Now it's to sleep. Now it's awake. And there is no such thing as turning one of these off. This is as off as you're going to get. Uh, the only way you're going to get it to completely turn off is if you remove the main battery and the backup battery. And after that, well, the RAM's going to be clear and you're going to have to start over from scratch. Because the operating system is stored in RAM. But let's see what we have here. Change my white balance here. It's, uh, <laughs> as you can see, it doesn't, uh, doesn't really keep its balance on this bed very good. But, uh, there's our icons. As you can see, it looks quite a bit like Windows XP. Uh, it does have Internet Explorer. It's a mobile version of Internet Explorer 6, so it doesn't work that well anymore. But there's uh, a mobile version of Outlook, Excel Viewer, a Picture Viewer, Windows Media Player 9, WordPad. It can connect to a desktop computer, PowerPoint Viewer, a PDF Viewer, and Word Viewer. And, of course, these are all mobile versions of their respective desktop counterparts. Um, wow. It's a really quick uh, time out there. It annoys me. Um, one of the things, uh, one of the merits that handheld PC2000 does have over CE4.2 is that it came with a suite of applications called Pocket Office. Uh, whereas uh, CE 4.2 does not have Pocket Office, it just has the Office viewers, but not the full Office applications. Um, that was fixed. Uh, someone from HPC Factor actually ripped the Pocket Office applications. So, uh, 900C owners like me could throw them on here and they can have the full Pocket Office programs. So, let's take a look uh, at some more stuff if we open the Start menu. It's not, it's, uh, it's not too far, it's not uh, very much unlike desktop windows. So, there's the suite of applications it comes with from the start. InkWriter is a, uh, kind of like paint, but it's for so you can write stuff, and it works horribly. Uh, the touchscreen is not meant for writing. 
but I can say hello. My bad writing doesn't help either. 2x plus 4 equals 8. So that means 2x equals 4, x equals 2. I know my math. You can also put a text box. Hello. Anyway, uh, I wish it was better for writing or I'd actually try and make some use of it, but uh, it's just horrible. Like, the display is... Oops, I'm on the text. The display is not meant for writing stuff as much as it is just pointing and clicking. <laughs> Do you want to save? God, no. Alright. Ah. This is hard to do on a video because this thing keeps tipping over. Um, I'll be right back. Okay, it shouldn't flip over so much now. So, let's go into programs. And we do have a command prompt, but it's not like DOS though. At least I don't believe it works much like DOS. If we try a command here, cannot SEO. I believe directory works though. So. Yeah, here's a directory of the contents. And look at some more. Uh, Explore, Media Player, WordPad. I'll show you what WordPad looks like. Like I said, they're scaled down versions of the uh, of their desktop counterparts. So I'm going to increase the contrast a bit. There's buttons here to uh, increase the contrast. We can go way up or way down. Yeah, that should be good. There's also brightness controls. Like that. And we can type. There, I can type my name. But uh, it might seem like these aren't very useful, but in reality, um, there's a ton of software people have written for these things, including uh, today with the open source movement. Uh, there are people writing open source software for these things. These things have an, an, a huge suite of software for them. We have Solitaire, which I have played a game on and won before. It works quite well, you just drag the cards around. By the way, um, I should have mentioned before, uh, notice the very wide display on these things. Most handheld PCs were based on what is called HVGA, meaning half VGA. The resolution is 640 by 240 pixels. And 90% uh, of handheld PCs uh, were HVGA based units. Um, there, were the, there were ones based on full VGA displays. Uh, calculator. And uh, oh, we do have a voice recorder. So uh, later what I'll do is I'll make a voice recording and I'll play it back through the Olympus LS7 so you'll see what the voice recording quality on this is like. It's actually really good. Now if we go into the control panel. There it is. Blah, blah, blah. If we go to display. It actually comes with like three. Actually two are icons. It comes with one background. WindowsCE.net. So we click OK, which is up here. And we go to the desktop. And hey, we get a background now. So if we go to power, there's our batteries. This thing actually has a really good battery on it. New, these were advertised to have, I believe, three to eight hours of battery life. Um, I get just about that out of this battery. So this thing actually is a really good battery. Um, Hey, look at that. Now it won't turn off on us all the time. Our volume control. I wish they had these things in the system tray, the power and volume icons, but they don't. But there are applications you can install to get them. Here's our volume. You can turn off the... Uh, sounds for the screen taps and you can put your own sounds if you want load them on and the system 
So there's our system dialog. It says X scale PXA255. There's our RAM. And just to reiterate what I said before, this thing has both RAM and flash storage. 64 megabytes of RAM and 32 megabytes of flash storage. The flash storage is purely for uh, data storage, like a uh, hard drive, but the RAM can be used for storage or actual RAM to run programs in. And that's where we go to the memory tab, where you can allocate sections of the RAM as either storage or program memory. And as it sets by default, we have 16 megabytes allocated for storage and the rest 48 megabytes for use as RAM. And you can change this on the fly to wherever you want. So if you have really big programs that, uh, you, that need a lot of memory to run, you can throw it over to the left side. If you only run small programs but you want to store them all in RAM, which isn't uh, recommended by the HPC community, you can throw it over towards the right side. So I'll throw that over there. But uh, they do recommend to allocate it all as RAM and store as much as possible on the internal storage or on a compact flash card. So that's it. So what I'll do now is I'll make a recording and uh, you get to hear how the recording quality of this thing is. Alright, I am now recording using the built-in microphone on the NEC Mobile Pro 900C handheld PC. I'm recording in the highest quality, which is 22 kilohertz PCM 16-bit mono sound. Uh, I gotta keep this recording short because it's being stored in RAM. So, as you heard, it doesn't sound too terribly bad. Um, I'll go into my computer here just to show you what all's in there. So we have the folder called internal disk which is the 32 megabyte flash storage. There's my backup file that's in there which is the reason I don't want to uh, format the RAM when it asks me. We have where your programs are installed to, program files. Some programs also uh, opt to install in Windows. And if I were to plug a USB flash drive into the USB port which uh, Windows CE 4.2 does support, it would show up here as well and it would be called hard disk. If I were to plug in a compact flash card, it would be called storage card. And as a matter of fact, I bought a compact flash card for this thing and uh, it's on the way here and uh, it's coming uh, back, it's coming to my mailbox at university. So uh, whether it's arrived or not, I don't know. I won't know until I go back after March break. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to hook this thing up to the Desk Pro so I can show you uh, the syncing features because um, one of the things about these handheld PCs is that they were really meant to be used as a companion to a regular desktop PC and as such it was very important that you hook these up to a desktop PC in order to synchronize data between them, data such as emails and documents and to keep a backup of the device itself. So in case you had to do a hard reset or something else happened and you lost everything in RAM, you could hook it up to your desktop PC and restore it. So I have a backup stored on the Desk Pro, so I'm going to hook this thing up to the Desk Pro and uh, show you the backup and restore features. And then we'll go over some of the software that I've installed on this thing. So I have the uh, NEC sitting on top of the Desk Pro here on my wonderful shelf. I uh, can't really see the screen there but uh, it'll work. And so um, this is now a dual purpose computer. It reads the video from this camcorder and it synchronizes with this thing. Unfortunately handheld PCs do not support Windows Vista or 7. You have to be, you have to be running between Windows 95 and Windows XP. So I just all you need is a regular USB cable plug into the mini USB port and there it recognized it. We get an icon beside the clock there. And because I reset it, uh, the Desk Pro thinks it's a brand new device, so 
I don't want to set up a new partnership. So what we do is we go to Tools, Backup Restore, go to the Restore tab, and Restore Now. And I believe it's this one. Blah, blah, blah. Your device will be returned to the state it was when it was backed up. Proceed with Restore. Yes, please. And it'll take a couple of minutes to do the Restore. And it doesn't say anything on the screen, but what it's going to do is now it's going to write to the RAM uh, everything that uh, was stored in the backup and it's going to make note of what should be removed from RAM in order for the device to be like it was when it was backed up. So it's going to write everything to RAM then tell me to soft reset to the device and when I do that it'll be back to the way it was when I backed up. And I've installed a bunch of uh, pretty cool programs to the thing so once this restore is done I'll be able to show you those programs. Okay, it's uh, a few days later. I've been pretty busy. I got this thing restored back to the way I had it with all the programs I installed on it. This thing's been acting pretty lethargic. It must be something I installed, but uh, I'll clean it out and actually just delete my restore and redo it all over once uh, I get uh, the compact flash card I got so I can uh, upgrade the bootloader and the ROM. Um, but. Uh, it's working right now, and I'll show you some of the programs I've installed on here. I got a pretty cool uh, background here. This came from HPC Factor. So first of all, I'll show you uh, Microsoft Pocket Word. There it is. And it's got a few different fonts. It's got the spell checker. A separate program does the word count. And uh, there it is. It does have the ability to display graphics, although uh, you have to, in order to add graphics to a document, it, it's, it's a pretty complicated process. It's not very straightforward. But uh, there's that. And I'll just use the keyboard here. I'll show you Excel, Pocket Excel. There it is pretty sweet and it doesn't I believe uh, handheld PC 2000 does come with full pocket PowerPoint but for some reason the p the person who ripped the applications didn't include it they just included the PowerPoint viewer so maybe the pocket PowerPoint doesn't work right on CE 4.2 but there you go and allows you to open uh, a PowerPoint now, I have a uh, flash drive hooked up to the USB port. This does have full support for a flash drive, very good support. And uh, I have on this flash drive a whack of programs that were on a CD that the guy who sold me this thing included. So, I have the shortcut to the flash drive right here, so we'll open it up. And go here. See a little animated logo there. Uh, go to this folder. Sometimes it takes a little bit to load. There we go. Uh, go to games. Now, much of the software on this is uh, Pocket PC and Windows Mobile software, which while some of it will run on this thing, uh, it doesn't display right. It displays on the left side of the screen and the bottom is cut off, so it's pretty much unusable. And right now it's doing something that it does quite often. It's uh, frozen up, trying to load all the icons. Uh, so it might be a minute, but uh, once it loads I'll open a couple of programs for you. Okay, now here's a game I think is pretty fun. It's called Five Cross. It's like a tic-tac-toe on steroids. You have this huge grid here, and I'm the X, so I'll just place an X wherever. And you win the game if you get five across. Either way, diagonal, straight, whatever, and you have to block your opponent, too. So I'll go here until somebody wins. And looks like the computer's gonna win. Anyhow, it's a fun game. I've played it quite a bit, so we'll get out of that. Uh, 
Here's a uh, pocket PC version of Battleship. As you can see, the graphics are kind of screwed up. I can't see the bottom half of uh, the opponent's playfield. There's probably some program I can install so that uh, I can see the bottom half of pocket PC software. And now it's not. There we go. Uh, Bublets. That's another one that works right on the handheld PC. So we'll open a new game. And the point of this one is you got to any two or more uh, bubbles that are directly adjacent to each other, you can tap on them to uh, delete them. And that makes uh, the rest of them on the left shift over. And basically the object is to get rid of as many uh, bubbles as possible. So that's pretty cool. And anyway, yeah, there's a whole bunch of crap on here. Minesweeper, unfortunately that doesn't even open. Not a valid Windows CE application. That means uh, it's probably for Pocket PC or Windows Mobile. And I'm missing a DLL needed to run it. The uh, custom ROM that someone uh, made for these things includes all the uh, DLLs you need to uh, run Pocket PC and Windows Mobile software. So that's really great. So uh, once I uh, get back to university where hopefully my compact flash card is in my mailbox there, I'll be able to uh, upgrade to that custom ROM, and that'll make things a lot better. So, um, what I think I'll do now, I forget if I mentioned before, but the seller of this thing also included a PCMCIA wireless card, so I can actually get on the internet on this thing. Um, the wireless card is only compatible with 802.11b, but our network here, our network's a G network, so it's directly backwards compatible with B. So, at least here at home, I can use this thing on the internet. So I'll grab the card and show you that right now. So, here's the card. It's a Linksys WPC11 version 3. And, uh, it's an 80211 uh, card from I believe the late 1990s and it works well and because this is not a card bus card this is only a 16-bit PCMCIA card since this thing's not compatible with card bus um, if I ever get a really old uh, you know a really old regular laptop uh, that has a PCMCIA slot this will be pretty great to uh, get it on the internet presuming it's uh, running Windows 95 or something compatible with wireless internet but uh We'll wake this up and put this in. There we go. And you get this warning because I'm running on the batteries, no matter. And you can see the card is alive. We got our network icon there. That should change in a minute or so. There we go. And we're on the network. Now, I'll open up Internet Explorer. It's a mobile version of Internet Explorer 6, and it really doesn't do jack crap on the internet at all. I can go to a really basic website uh, for handheld PCs. It's called hpcmonex.net, and it's a text-only website. All that's in it is uh, text, so it should load right up. Internet Explorer is very slow. I have another web browser installed that works so well that you can actually browse the modern internet with it with no problem at all. So, uh, I'll just prove that Internet Explorer somewhat works, but then we'll switch to that other web browser. Well, two minutes later, it decided to load, and I get this box, which, uh, I don't get why Microsoft didn't correct this. Look at this. The bottom of the box is cut off. And this is a handheld PC program, so I don't know why Microsoft just overlooked this problem here. But I do know if I press tab two times and then press enter, it gets rid of it. And hey, here's the website. So we can go down. All it is is text. This site has a lot of great software and the custom ROM for handheld PCs, especially the NEC Mobile Pro 900 series. And, uh, yeah, it works, barely. This this web browser doesn't even load Google. Now, I've never seen a web browser that couldn't load Google. Uh, the 16-bit version of Internet Explorer 5.5, I believe it's 5.5, that runs on Windows 3.1, even that will load Google, but this won't. So we'll get out of that, because it sucks. And we'll open a much better web browser once my desktop loads here. And 
it is right here. And it's Opera, Opera Mini 5. This is the last version to run on handheld PCs. It was released in 2010. It has a bug where uh, the taskbar is completely unusable and it covers up the buttons on the bottom of the browser but I can still barely press them and bring it up and this web browser works absolutely amazing for example I'll go to youtube.com slash the merry time man enter there we go and we're on the mobile version of YouTube there's my page 92% of my views were lost when YouTube decided that uh, non-viewable videos didn't count anymore. But uh, we can take the pen and scroll like this. Here's my latest videos at the time of making this. Here's some uh, silent shoutouts for everybody. And uh, we can also just use the arrow keys and go down. And the desktop version also works. We'll click desktop. And I'm going to change my white balance. And there's the uh, desktop version of the page, which uh, seems to more or less render somewhat correctly. This does support Adobe Flash, although only up to version 7, back when it was Macromedia Flash. And, uh, yeah. We can scroll side to side here. Now here's where you can see the uh, DSTN display at its finest. Um, it takes so long for the pixels to change color. So you get a lot of ghosting. It makes watching videos um, kind of weird to do on this thing. Hey, look at that. I hit 1,400 subscribers even. Cool. I almost forgot. This little guy down here, this little microchip, that's another program I installed. You can actually overclock these things. The stock speed's 400 megahertz. I can bump it up to 472. And now we're running at 472 megahertz, where things do run quite a bit faster. Now I'll close that. The desktop refreshes faster. Now likewise, I can underclock it, as you may have seen, all the way down to 100 megahertz. When that happens, things slow to a crawl. Watch uh, the USB drive open. It's pretty slow. Now I'll close it. Good for saving battery life. We'll go back to uh, 472. You can go faster than that. You can go to 530, but uh, mo for most people, including myself, it's not successful. It just causes everything to crash. So uh, we won't go to 530. Well, that's about all there is to show for now of the NEC Mobile Pro 900C handheld PC from 2004. Um, it's definitely a bit rough around the edges right now, just where I'm still learning how to do everything and use it properly. Um, I'm still figuring out what applications work and don't work. Um, I've installed some applications that don't work the way they're supposed to, and that's kind of screwed some stuff up. But uh, once I get back to university and get my compact flash drive, I'll be able to upgrade the firmware and the bootloader. Um, and that'll include all the software uh, needed to run a lot of the programs, because I think the reason a lot of the programs that I'm trying on this aren't running is simply because I don't have the uh, required DLLs and stuff installed. So, uh, once I get all that stuff done and uh, get this thing uh, working a bit more fully, I'll make an update video and uh, show you some more stuff. So, until then, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time.